In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for inspiring us and bringing us to this school successfully. We ask that you send the Holy Spirit to us today, that all we shall learn will be for the good of your church, for the future priests, and for the glory of your name. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, thank you, thank you too. Thank you, uh, Welcome back to school and to class. Like I said, this morning we'll be looking at common barriers in communication. Uh, I could not share my screen uh, because the laptop is not connecting. We are having issues with MTN, but um, Airtel is working by the grace of God. Now, on this slide, there is a, a comic relief that uh, a, a, a bamboo who said that uh, even to see banana shop for Nigeria now, no problem. Then I ask, person will no get money for pockets, no go fit communicate well. <laughs> So being, being in Nigeria is already a barrier to, to communication, you know, from that joke, from that joke. Now, despite effective communication being an essential leadership skill, it is still an often overlooked by some congregations. Now, formators tend to think their communication is better than what it really is. Now, in a few minutes, I'll be showing you some common barriers that you necessarily need to overcome as a formator. Now, the first one is a resistance to change. Resistance to change. Now, when formators are resistant to change, they are often consigned with making mistakes or fail to communicate properly and have the right protocols in place. So, there is this fear of whether you are doing it right or wrong, and then once you have that fear, uh, you will not be able to communicate properly. Now, the second barrier is uh, uncertainty or lack of clarity. Now, this can happen when the formator is unsure of what to communicate or how to communicate the message appropriately. To deliver a clear message and get your point across, you need to give your candidate Contest that they can understand. Now, talking about contest, you know, you have to bring your your story home to what is feasible and what is uh, practicable. For instance, when you are talking about the 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 snow in Nigeria, you know, we don't have snow here, and uh, so you have to look for something that looks like snow. To explain the, 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 the true contents of the message to them. Now, if you are talking to them about Amatan, then they will understand very clearly what Amatan is all about. So, but talking about snow, about winter, you know, about summer, you know, they're, they're abstract and they, they will not be able to understand clearly what you really want to communicate. Now, the next one you should be looking at is um, if you don't have anything to communicate that you are sure of, always remember that a meaningful silence is always better than meaningless words. Now, silence sometimes can be so powerful. No, Cardinal Sarah, in that beautiful book, you know, the, 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 in his theology of silence, will tell us that those moments within the liturgical setting that the priest does not say anything, communicates even more. more. Now, I will narrate the story of uh, the former rector of SSP and Paul Bodija, Father Sasa. Now, a brother came to him for permission to attend a wedding in Lagos. And the rector told him not to attend that wedding, that he should stay in school. But the brother, you know, he, he could not listen to the rector. He decided to attend the, the wedding in Lagos, so he, he escaped, he jumped the fence. 
Fortunately or unfortunately, while he dressed in the sacristy waiting for the priest to arrive, the rector arrived. He was the one to officiate that wedding. <laughs> he did not know that, you know, the rector also knew the same benefactor. So the rector looked at him and he never made a statement. Then he he told the he celebrated the mass and after the mass he entered his car and he saw the brother go and he said, May I please drop you off back in the school? <laughs> and the brother entered the school, threw out in the car, he played music and was cheerful, he never asked him anything. They reached the seminary and then he opened the door and said, Have a wonderful day. <laughs> the seminarian <laughs> left for his room and he never had peace. One week, two weeks, three weeks, the rector never called him. So he went to the rector by himself and asked, Father, I don't know this one that you are not talking. <laughs> and Father said, did, there, did anything happen? <laughs> you know, the message is so loud and clear. He knew he has done what is wrong. And so his conscience surely uh, will disturb him. But sometimes, I think the director shouted, eh -eh, I'll catch you this. I mean, that ends it. After shouting, what happened next? What happened next? Now, one of the conflicts, um, the, the barriers you need to remove again in communication in, in the formation now is, is the conflict among formators. Now, community conflicts can occur for a variety of reasons and becomes a larger barrier for effective communication. This is a great opportunity to improve your communication and find resolution to the conflict at hand through dialogue. You need to talk about it. You need to resolve it. Uh, be careful. Formandists like to create conflicts. And when they create that conflict, they, they have their way. So you will be so busy with your conflict and then a lot will go wrong in your formation now. In your formation now. So the aim of arguments or of discussion should not be victory but progress. Should not be victory but progress. So each time you, you come to discuss as formators, don't always insist that your opinion must count. You know, listen to others. Listen to others. Now another barrier is a varied communication styles. Now everyone has their own communication preferences. Varied communication styles. Varied. Yeah. Now, everyone has their own communication preference. Some need direct approaches, while others prefer more indirect. Now, there are form and these that as soon as they do something wrong, you just have to approach it there and there. So this is wrong, and they, they listen to you. But there are some, when you talk to them that way, they put up a defensive mechanism, and they get angry, they get upset, and they go into their shells. So you will not be able to reach out to them. Now, this is also taking into account uh, too many assumptions or few pointers for meters. And candidates have different ideas and perspectives on the message being communicated. Sometimes, like in this class, um, why here in this class, some people get the message immediately. Some will need to go back and read the note or rewatch the video again before they can get the the, the, the gist of the whole uh, communication. So you need always to uh, have this in mind when dealing with your candidates. I have before me an illustration of a tree, you know, one tree with pepper on the same tree, the same rain, one is ripe and the other is not ripe, but on the same tree of uh, pepper. So we talk of the same, the same realm, but different grace and different time to fulfill destiny. So you need to create time to discover whom you are talking to, whom your candidates are, and what you need to do to get them to that destination. So don't compare from and the A to from and the B. They are coming from different backgrounds, different backgrounds. And so you have to develop different ways of reaching out to each of them according to their own need in their own ways. Now, the next barrier is disruption. Disruption. 
Interferences affect the ability for you or your team or for methods to concentrate on what is being communicated to the formandee. Now, due to interruption from the major superiors, you know, the powers that be, other members of the other members of the congregation, busy surrounding, emails, calls, phone calls, and other interruptions, what you intend to pass in the formation as could be impaired. Now, the worst is when your major superior or your bishop is interested in a particular candidate. You know, sometimes they may even be close to them that they discuss even your own posting with your formandee. <laughs> Tell me how the formandee still respects you. And the greatest enemy of our time is the social media. Now you are trying to teach your formandee the beauty of silence after night prayer, but unfortunately they are going to make use of their WhatsApp and chat with their friends. Now they are also going to go to Facebook or Twitter, or Instagram, and all of these make a whole hell lot of noise for them. Now, you are teaching them in Ibadan, whereas they are watching the online mass and liturgy of Seat of Wisdom. So, they come back to your community and begin to compare what you are doing to what is going on there. So, all of this causes a big problem in what you intend to, to communicate. And then you must find a way to, to, to remove them. Now, uh, okay, we'll still take a course on the use of social communication, so let me not go deep in that now. Now, the next barrier is lack of communication channels. Either a lack of how the message is communicated, or an awareness of how to appropriately communicate through various channels, such as in-person, email, or meetings. Now the problem is, what is the best way, the best place, who and whom to communicate? Now, this, the formandees are to go on holiday. Now, who is supposed to communicate this to them? The auxiliary, the superior, or the formator? Sometimes you have to know as, uh, uh, the, the, the necessity of who make the proper communication. Now, when it comes to this kind of situation, the one who makes the announcement of all the day is the superior of the community because it takes charge of how people go in and how they come in. Now, when you want to communicate the evaluation of the student, the one who communicates is the immediate formator. Now, you don't also communicate the evaluation of the, of the formandee through another formandee. You must communicate directly, in person, and face-to-face, -face, not through phone, not by writing, because by writing sometimes um, ambiguity may make the candidate not to understand what is written. So that you explain very clearly and verbally what you feel about the candidate. And sometimes when you don't communicate as a person, you allow them to communicate the message. They will distort the message. I told you the story of when I was in Aspirant and somebody would say 10 bamboo and all of those things. You know, A lot of that happened because people like to put salt and sugar. So if I say that, Tomorrow, there will be recollection, and I told one of them to tell. He will rather go there to tell them that there will be recollection tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. There will be no lunch, or there will be no talking, you know. Because he needed to have some level of authority too, to prove to them that he's, he's the one that, uh, that got to get about this information. They sat before me after the ordination. The superior gave the ordination certificate to one of them. I don't want to mention his name, you know. And I, do you know that he kept it in his room for like a week that is busy? When he's less busy, he will share it to them. <laughs> you know? Until when Father asked the other one, where is your have you? I hope you got your certificate. He said, no. Then he asked him, he said, Father, I'm still doing some other things. I will get to them. <laughs> See how, how people could uh, take authority into their own hands when you allow them. Now, the next barrier is dishonesty or lack of transparency. 
Now, effective communication cannot happen when there is lack of trust. And if candidate holds back certain information from you, it will be more difficult for your team to process the for information. So hence the candidate might be malformed. Now, they won't fully tell you about their previous life or certain hidden things about them if they perceive that they cannot trust you. So, as a formator, you must be able to build some level of trust. Some level of trust. Um, let me open the, the class for discussion now. Now, in this case of trust, and making for Mandy to trust us and discuss with us, what do you think we can do to affect this? You can unmute yourself if you want to contribute. Can you hear me? Yes, Father. Okay, so what do you think we can do to affect this? I mean, what do you think we can do to make our family trust us? You can talk. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Father. Good morning, sister. Um, Father, I think for me, if I would want to build trust with a woman, I would first of all make the formandi feel he can trust me by trusting the formandi with some certain um, task which ordinarily he would see that as a privilege or something that he knows quite well it's um, not he's not supposed to be exposed to such a task for instance he is not the senior in the group but then I entrust something to the person, and the person delivers it, and I acknowledge um, what the person has done. I think from there, I will be able to build up the trust gradually. Okay. Um, may I ask, sister, what do you mean by senior in the group? Like in my congregation, we, um, based on the, the way you come in, that is how the first to come becomes the first um, oh. novice, then the senior to all of them. Wow. So imagine someone I see is having um, issues with trust and the person is the least in a group. Then I might, in a way, assign a responsibility. Today you are the one to go to this place and to do this particular task. And I'm giving you this task because I trust you. Okay. I know you will deliver. And then, with that encouragement, the person will say, ah, this person sees something good in me and is able to allow me to do this particular thing. And then the praise that comes or the acknowledgement of this good deed done by the person would, in a way, foster um, the, the relationship with the formator and then build trust in the yeah. process. Well, I don't know how you you'll see this, but I, maybe my own perspective, you know, Within the set, having one who is senior and one who is no senior could also be a problem already in formation house. You know? Now, for me, every set that comes in are a, a classmate. And then once they perceive that this one is more superior, this one, you know, in future, you are going to create a congregation of fear. Whereby, even when some people are talking, you know, others uh, will have to shift away. No, I know that is common sometimes in some female congregation whereby even the finally professor will have to wear ring, you know. And uh, no, that is that is not the level at which we come okay. to ours. 
Okay. It's more or less um, responsibility. Okay. As as that functions. Yes. As okay. Functions. It starts to function a little better. I understand it now. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's okay it's then. Strange. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? Can I ask? Yes, father. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, maybe my other uh, maybe if it won't go well. I think the first thing to really establish is um, that environment whereby the the commandy is accommodated. For it, that is, there should be a room for familiarization. Yeah. For sister, we just spoke first. I think our own mode of uh, familiarizing is to entrust the commandy with the yeah. responsibility such that there can be a frequent contact, discussion, and then. But then, you know, but to get the best, because now we are dealing with trust, to get the best out of the commandy, sometimes when those works go and they don't go the same way, or those works don't fit into the pattern for which you wanted, you yourself can begin to have some sentiments towards the commandy. Yeah. That we <laughs> alter the, the, the room the, the that you are trying to create for hmm. openness. So, in, in counseling, the first approach is always what is referred to as empathy. Empathy must be established whereby you familiarize and you're able to feel the other person and the person feels that you are feeling it. Yeah. And that's why most of um, the spiritual directors will have the better of to enjoy this this kind of openness, different or compared to any other form of uh, hierarchy or structures in, in the particular environment. But the first thing is uh, familiarization. Let there be the atmosphere where the individual is free to be able to open his mind without being judged. Yeah. And it is not going to be easy, Father, because even for you, Father, we don't know how you are we don't know how you're able to carry along. Uh, which is it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Now, Father, looking at it from the decision point of view now, do you yeah. think anybody, as in, a, a, let me use the language of the Dutch now, a seminarian, will ever trust a formator? Like in Bodhijana, for instance, where we all went. <laughs> I mean, looking at the reality. Yes, sir, that's why I said that. <laughs> And yeah. Because they feel confident that whatever is, is, is being discussed will not be disclosed. Yeah. But do you remember the story of Father Afa Murillo when he first came and he brought some people for exposure yeah. and he let you go? He let you go out to say, let us respect the old seminary, you know? <laughs> to ensure that, again, that as a spiritual director, he shouldn't have done that, you know? They corrected that impression. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know? That's, that's yeah, beautiful. That's <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, he should be able to be, uh, you know, one thing about the command is, in as much as you feel you want to also change me, I also want to see an aspect whereby you also listen to me to even know yourself better. Hmm. Yeah, that creates the enabling environment for both of them to be on even, even uh, ground. Yeah. Because otherwise, no matter how you feel you want to come down to the level of that uh, command, yeah. distractor sometimes will be a barrier distractor like he knows where he is and he can see you where you are and the, the grounds are not the <laughs> yeah it's yeah, you're right the, uh, yeah so that's my contribution yeah that's a beautiful contribution father hmm. okay well it can still be like that since my voice is no, it's better to see you talking okay, okay. Okay, I, on my own part, I feel then being approachable is one of the things that is also important because in the links you sent of um, Father Mozilla on YouTube, yeah. there was something he said about having an encounter with a priest, a formator, who yeah. told him that he passed through the midst of his formandy and they kept quiet. Then he came to Father Mozilla and told him, see, Anytime I pass through their midst, they will keep quiet. Just watch. I'm going back and I'll see what will happen. And they were discussing. Immediately he passed there. There was silence again. Then Father Mozilla told him, that means you are not a formator. You are a terror. <laughs> because you have failed to build trust there. Yeah. So I think one thing is very important. A kind of being approachable is very, very important. It is when you are approachable, that is when you create that environment that is conducive for them. 
Because if you are not approachable, everybody see you as when you come in, the formandis will not even be open or disposed to talk. Even when they are discussing, they just signal that if the commentator is coming, there will be silence yeah. everywhere. So that is just what I feel. Okay. Okay. I think we have all shared beautifully well. And you agree with me that this discussion opened our our mind to certain realities where we are not looking at before. Thank you all for sharing. Uh, we proceed with the class. Now, the, the next barrier is a uh, lack of listening. Now, for mentors need to listen just as much, if not more, than they talk. They often do not um, encourage enough feedback or clarification when communicating specific messages. When informator is the talking type, always correcting, always shouting, you know, you may not really get the best out of these people because they may not also use their own initiative for everything. They want to get every every information from you. Now, becoming an active listener, there are five keys, five key techniques that I can use to help you to become a more effective listener. Let me show, okay, let me see whether you can see this. This, that's me in the, in the radio station, Gadgets FM. Okay, you know, to, to work in the radio station, you must, uh, you must listen a lot, especially if it's a calling program. Otherwise, you will not be able to, to, to carry your audience along. So the first thing you need to do is to pay attention. Attention. Give the speaker your undivided attention and acknowledge the message. You must also recognize that non-verbal communication also speaks loudly. You know, if a man is before you talking and then somehow the face is cusing or is trying to shift body, you know. It could be having some discomfort or some pain. So you as a formator must identify that immediately and ask, brother, what is wrong? Brother, what is wrong? Um, remember, I'm be very conscious that I use the language brother or sister, not seminarian. Because when you call somebody seminarian, it behaves like one. No, no make pleasure matters too. When you call somebody my brother, he sees you as a family. He sees you as a, as, as I know. If you call somebody my sister, you know, it's not because you are you are in charge. You just say um, Lucy, you know. You shout Lucy, you know. But when you say oh, sister Lucy, you know that that brings uh, a kind of um, uh, more confidence. Now, when your formandi is talking to you, you need to look at their face directly. You don't look away. You look directly to their face. So that there is a kind of dominance you create with that. It, it puts you in charge. It puts you in charge. Now, be careful when you do that because sometimes your face <laughs> can also make them not to talk, especially if you don't have a smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> If you are not the type that your face is welcoming, <laughs> that also can put them off. Okay? Now, you need to also put aside distracting thoughts when they are with you. I know you have your personal problems, you have your own challenges, but whoever those thoughts are the one occupying your, you know, your space while they are talking to you, I'm, I'm sure you, uh, you won't get best out of the discussion. Now, don't mentally prepare a rebooter. You know? uh, sometimes when the formandi come to talk to us, because of what we know of the formandi, we have already prepared in our mind. And as, as in no matter what he's going to say. We have a brother here too in those days, you know. Everybody knows that, you know. He, he likes sisters so much. <laughs> He likes his stars. So if he comes on a Wednesday outing, that I, I want to visit ESG. <laughs> 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 you know, the formator already 
O meu onto say no 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 no. You cannot go to ESD. But this time, if he wants to go to ESD to get an assignment done or to pass an important information, don't don't judge based on what you know of the informant did before. Always hear them. Every case should be new, unique, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and useful. Now, avoid being distracted by environmental factors. For example, now if a man is talking to you, your phone rings. Boom! Because you are in charge, you pick your phone. You don't even have the courtesy to say, please, may I? You know, when you tell your formandi, may I? You know, even before you, you are teaching that formandi how to even respect others in future when it becomes. So, hello? And you are talking? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, all of these are under pay atten paying attention. Yeah. I've also talked about, um, you know, you need to listen to the speaker's body language when talking to you. It's very important. You know, if a man comes to you, he wants to report a case, and then there is another person there, he could not trust that person. <laughs> So that is the way the body will tell you that this person is not willing to... So you need to tell the family oh, that, okay, okay, don't worry, we'll talk some other time, you know. And then you save the situation. You save the situation through that. Now the second one you need to know is show that you are listening. Show that you are listening. Now we know you are listening, but you have to show it also. Now, use your own body language and gesture to show that you are engaged. You nod occasionally, you know. Like Reverend Martin is always doing before me when I look at you, you nod. You, know, you nod. You give me confidence that, oh, I'm talking. I'm talking. Smile and use other facial expressions. Smile, smile. Make sure that your posture is open and interested. Not somebody is talking to you and you are like this, looking at, looking out. Uh -huh. Are you true? <laughs> Encourage the speaker to continue with small, far back comment like, Yes, mm hmm, it's okay. You know, <laughs> you know, it's important, you know. With that, you'll be a better communication. Even where the person did not intend to go before, you see them even opening up and giving you more. Now, number three is that you must provide feedback. Our personal filters, assumptions, judgments, and belief can distort what we hear. Now, as a listener, your role is to understand what is being said. This may require you to reflect on what is being said and to ask questions. Reflect on what has been said by paraphrasing. Um, like, what I'm hearing is... And um, like, thanks, it sounds like you are saying that you didn't sleep well at night. You know? These are great ways to reflect back. Now ask questions to clarify certain points. What do you mean when you say that the most senior? <laughs> you know, I need to clarify that. You need to clarify that immediately. Is that then when the person explains you, you need to is that what you really mean? Then you summarize your former this comment periodically, you know. You do that. Now, tip if you find yourself responding emotionally to what someone said. Say so. Like uh, the person is telling you that, oh, I lost my mom, and then uh, you have lost your mom too. Oh, I feel the same way. <laughs> we are both orphans now. <laughs> you know? So that, that helped them to, 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 uh, to feel that you actually feel what, the, what they are feeling. Now, the fourth one is that you defy judgments. 
Interrupting is a waste of time. It frustrates the speaker. It frustrates your formandi. It limits full understanding of the message. Allow him or her to finish each point before asking questions. Don't interrupt with counter arguments. I know you. I know you. I know you are the one that makes the noise. You know? I know it's you. It must be Sister Lucy. You know? <laughs> you know? She must be the first in class. She's the one that will ask questions. I know. <laughs> and my brother, you don't know anything. So take it easy, eh? <laughs> take it easy. Don't give judgments. Don't at all at all. Now the fifth one is that you must respond appropriately. As a listening for me to, you should be designed to encourage respect and understanding. Now you are gaining information and perspective. So you have nothing by attacking the speaker, otherwise putting him or her down. You know, be candid, open and honest in your response. Assert your opinions respectively. Treat the other person in a way that you think they would want to be treated. The formandi tomorrow can be your major superior. I mean, the formandi today can be your major superior tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> so that's life. That's life. That's life. So you must have that at the at the unlike Father Callistus, your bishop is your bishop forever. Until death do you part. <laughs> <laughs> so your bishop can treat you anyhow. He knows that there will be no meeting for it. If you are going to be a bishop, it's in another diocese. <laughs> you know. <laughs> eh, but not in your case. <laughs> so that you don't go with Rotis, you go and fight bishop now. You say you learn it from me. I know Tokamo. <laughs> you know? Now, barriers of effective communication within formation team often lead to decrease of productivity rates in candidates. Everyone, especially for methods, should be actively trying to overcome these barriers to effective communication within their community while also trying to improve upon their overall communication skills. Now, keep in mind that communication is often done through various channels, which include everything from direct conversation, email, phone to social media, and even body language. Giving attention to possible communication barriers will greatly improve the impacts and effectiveness of interactions, while also improving candidate engagement and knowledge retention. You know, it helps them to... to now, any question? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Say something about social media. Yes. Yes. As a barrier to communication, I don't know. I don't know. Now, my question is that is it will be right if you take if you collect the force of your formatting from them, will be right? Or there should, should they be allowed to be useful? You know, if you knew that, you know, in, in, in this life now, you know, of that they have become so porous with uh, social media now. So, you know, if you knew that uh, you're in a special house, will you be right if you collect the force from them? So that so I'm not to be, but they to be distracted. Now, it depends on the level of the formation. For instance, okay. the novices are not expected to use phones. You get it? It's a given in the church. Except the novice master or the novice masters judge that necessary and only when necessary. But for somebody who is already professed, you know, like, like male congregation now, you have professed brother, who go to philosophy, theology before becoming priest. When you take away their phone from them, you are infringing on their fundamental human rights. 
you know that when you do it in Nigeria, they may not fight you, but if you do that in Europe, you are going to prison. They will arrest you, you know, they will fight you. But in, in uh, now the world has grown to a stage where um, you have no right to collect somebody's phone anymore. So what you need to do at that point is constant engagement with your formandi on how to make use of their phone. Like you need to let them know that this phone can never be used at, in the public domain. Like when the community is eating, praying and other things, if the phone rings, it's a serious foundation to community life. Now, as to what they browse or what they do, my brother, you don't have uh, control over that. You can only do mea kupa, mea kupa, mea masuma kupa. Because <laughs> if you think you are going on streamline or stop them, but uh, they are going to give you a phone, but they are going to have a bigger phone yeah. with them, which is now hidden. <laughs> which is now hidden and which is even more dangerous. Now, is it not better that you are aware that they have these things? And then during um, conferences, occasionally you bring professionals to talk to them about how to make use of these facilities. And then you redirect their mind to the positive aspect of it. Because in the real sense, this same gadget can help them be a better person in school. You know, to do their research and other things. So I would not advise that we take away this phone from them. I would rather advise that we encourage and teach them to, to use it well. Father Calistus will tell us better, you know, there back in the seminary where they don't allow us to use phone. We all have it. Yeah? <laughs> I've written several. I've gone to even prepare to give talk on that. You know, Bishop Badijo is a man of communication. He presented a paper even when I was there, the major superiors and bishop, this another discussion we had in the battle here. Bishop Badi Justin mentioned it. He uh Bekele said over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a no discussion for them. But the truth is they train deceivers and liars. All these brothers have it. And that explains why immediately after ordination, you see a priest with six different phones. He wants to show you that they have arrived. <laughs> yeah? Terrible ones. I think it's not even ordinary. The day we did our... BTH. BTH. They start freaking out in the class. Before the public, they are superior. They say we have finished. You hear what Reverend is saying? We brought BTH. We finished. They brought it out. The day they finish BTH, that day in the seminary, but that had the phones. So nothing they happen again. Serious phones. You know? <laughs> So we should look actually for other ways to get this done, you know, to get this done. You also know that you have no right to take any form and D for psychological test anymore. With the new law, we are going to get there. <laughs> Most of us abuse that. Yeah, I go for psychological test. No, 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 no. It's an international law. If they catch you, you go to prison. <laughs> yeah. Now, the only reason you can send a formandi to psychologist is for therapy purpose. What it means is that when you send that formandi to a psychologist, the result does not come to you at all. The result is shared with the formandi, and the psychologist helps the formandi to be better. And if the result is to be given to you, the formandi must sign. Not on that question now, that I willingly want to share it with you for better follow-up. Not you telling that, Hey, you have to sign that to be shared with me. No, that's an abuse. It's no longer accepted information houses. <laughs> yes, Father? Yes, I, I have to just add to the most things you just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, and the most important Yeah. Okay. So, uh, everything you said is just uh, true. Uh, when it comes to the phone, in Nigeria, we have this small group of no phones. In the seminar, yeah. again, as <laughs> them, you cannot take our phones when we get to the US. You see? <laughs> <laughs>